Hello and welcome. Silray is here with Mech Warrior Online. This is a laser vomit skill tree guide. Couple things before I move on to actually talking about the skill trees and showing the skill maze and all of that. First of all, if you just want a general view and then go and play with it yourself, you go into the firepower tree to pick up heat generation, range, laser duration, and cooldown. Then you go into operations tree to pick up cool run and nothing else, because at this time, the time this video gets published, heat containment does basically nothing. You do not want to spend any skill points on heat containment. If you are watching this video from the future, check the timestamp. Maybe at the time you are watching this, this is actually being fixed, but not at the time this video gets published. And finally you go into the survival tree for some structure and armor. Preferably in the opposite order. Armor first, then structure. And also, for the other thing, just doing that sort of a general idea there does not play to the strengths of your mech. Tweak it. Tweak the skill tree setup to the strengths of what you are playing. A simple example, you can take a wolfhound with 6 medium pulse lasers, or a vulcan with 5 medium pulse lasers, and call it a laser vomit mech. And then we can take something else that has 3 large lasers and 6 medium lasers, and it's a laser vomit. But however, both of these things do laser vomit differently, they have very different priorities and very different strengths. One of them for example, the three large laser, six medium laser one is just going to vomit out a massive volley, probably at the slower speed, because it's definitely a heavy mag at that point. Whereas on, a, on the lower end of the uh, spectrum, we can have a wolfhound with six medium pulses, which is a fast light mag still, and would possibly prefer speed over simply being able to vomit the uh, lasers out all the time in a continu continuous fashion. So, could benefit from another different thing. So, the rest of this is going to also have some math, some numbers, and I will try to make that as simple as possible, so it's nice and concise and easily understood. So, let's get to the, the, the actual skill maze, then. Here we are, in the game itself. I'm doing this with my second Warhammer 6D for two reasons. One, Warhammer 6D only has base at energy range. It doesn't have anything to do with cooldown or duration, which is very good for actually showing off what, what are the effects of the skill tree. And also because I have a little bit of XP points on this one, but I never turned any of that into skill points, so I have an entirely clean slate to assign points into to show that off. Now, let us talk about numbers first of all, because those are the important bit. I have a bunch of ER medium lasers on this belt, so we can use that as a simple example. 4 as a cooldown, that is 4 second cooldown and 0 0.9 second laser beam duration. Alright, let us take all of the skill nodes here which pertain actually to laser vomit belts. All of them. The, the, just the ones which do with laser vomit, nothing else, because this is a laser vomit build. And I will actually show you a few things you can do to shave off skill points here, which are, in the end, unnecessary. And which will help you to, well, really make these builds fit for your own setup. Hopefully, you know, as a means of showing up, you know, how, how to work the skill tree, put it that way. Now this would be all the skill points which are actually useful for a laser vomit. Now let's hop on here and the game let the game do the math for me. Because there is no quirks changing the cooldown or the duration, this is entirely from the skill tree. So I lose about, or rather gain, about half a second on the cooldown of the ER medium lasers, and the burn duration is 0.135 seconds faster. 
So it's basically 0 0.765 instead of 0 0.9. Both of those are very good numbers. However, this build here is not limited on the cooldown of the weapons. This build generates a lot of heat when it fires all of those lasers at once, so this build is limited by the heat, not on the cooldown of the ER medium laser, or the cooldown of the large laser, which we also have a whole lot of over here. No, the cooldown of the large laser is under 2.8 seconds. That is not a limiting factor. So what you can actually do here, because cooldown is not the limiting factor, you can very easily eliminate all of the outlying cooldown nodes with no actual adverse effect to your build at all. And you simply gain a few skill points to spend somewhere else. This is five skill points I just gained by simply understanding that, okay, I am not limited by cooldown, I am limited by heat, so I want all the heat gen nodes. Alright, seems fine. However, if we are talking about, let's say, a small mech, a light mech with nothing but small pulse lasers on it, we have a different setup entirely, because if we look at small pulse lasers, let me pick up those skill point, uh, skill nodes back up, so this is more pronounced even than what this was over there, right? However, on small pulse lasers, we are only with full skill points, we are only gaining 0 0.075 seconds on the duration, whereas on the cooldown, we are gaining 0 0.228. So the cooldown goes down to about 0 0.7, and the duration isn't even 0 0.4, it's still it's 0 0.425. So we don't really gain much of anything from the duration nodes. So you can easily drop all the outlying duration nodes and just run with that. Technically, if you really wanted, you could just say bye-bye to this as well, and you would be quite okay, and you would gain a bunch of skill points to put somewhere else. Hopefully that really illustrates the point of actually building the skill maze to fit whatever setup you are going for, and what are the limiting factors of your build in actual gameplay. Because on paper it looks like for this build, it looks like all of these nodes are useful, but in actual, real gameplay, I know for a fact, I can just drop all of these cooldown nodes, and my gameplay will not suffer for it, it will not actually change at all. So there you go. Now, I'm doing this for this build, I'm not doing this for the small pulse laser build, so I'm gonna drop those cooldown nodes and then move on elsewhere. Let's move on to the next one, operations. We have a lot of heat sinks, we want to cool off faster so we can churn out the next laser vomit. Alright? Now, so we have to start in quick ignition. Personal preference would be to go down here nice and quick. Because I don't think much of this, I don't think much of this. However, if I could avoid this heat containment node, that would be fantastic. Because at the time, of this video making, heat content does basically nothing. Not worth the points. However, I want this cool run from here. And so I am going to go down this path. If I just ignore this cool run, which we can do if you want points elsewhere for some reason, you can just go down here. These hill climb nodes will pretty much always be more, you know, useful for you than improved gyros and more speed retention. Let's uh, just put it this way, they will be useful in more situations during gameplay than speed retention or improved gyros. Alright? So if we wanted to, we could do it this way and just grab these and that cool run. Ignore heat containment, get to ignore this heat containment, but we are not getting this cool run. However, if we want that cool run, 
then I would definitely personally do it this way around and then spend the points on that cool run. And then next jump into survival tree and here I do not have an AMS so I'm avoiding that and what I want is armor hardening. That is something I really really want out of here. The reason for that is because as soon as your armor is broken, we are talking about losing internals. So having more armor before, you know, we are talking about losing internals is better than having just beefed up internals. However, once you have all the armor, then we can start really looking at, you know, well, do we want the rest of this tree? We can definitely do. Pick up more armor in the process and also pick up some more some actual structure in the process. And suddenly we have two points to spend on something. Two points will easily get us uh, a few things from somewhere else. For example, if, we, if you really want auxiliary stuff, you can at this point even decide, all right, let's say I just want enhanced cool shots to really go with this. Okay, we can do that. We can do that nice and easy. To go one or the other doesn't matter at this point. However, since I am now doing that, maybe we are sacrificing this here. And saving the points from there to take the... Losing one cool run, a bunch of useless nodes, like this whole bunch of four useless nodes, for one cool run, and suddenly we can have ourselves some cool shots. And look at that, 91 skill points. If you however don't care about any of this, or you are only spending points for example uh, for some advanced salvos or something, and don't want the cool runs, then you can debate going for this cool run here cool shots, cool run, whatever. You can debate going for this to get even more durability. However, the shock absorbance is a little wonky. Here is another point of a little bit more. Or here you can always just try and grab back some of these cooldown nodes. All right, I hope that helped you out with coming up with a build of your own. Where do you actually, where you can shave off points where you can refocus those points. For example, if you are a light mech, you are doing this on a laser vomit light mech, you can easily sacrifice points here and start heading, for example, into sensors for radar deprivation, into mobility for speed tweak to move faster, and all of those things. And if you are talking light mech, you might very easily be able to shave off these laser duration nodes as well because you are probably using something else than very long duration lasers. Probably. Not always the case, but probably. Alright, hopefully this is a good enough framework that you folks can do the math on your own and build your mech to be exactly what you, uh, what you want out of it to your strengths and weaknesses and also to the strengths and weaknesses of your mech and your chosen weapon systems as in chosen version of lasers. Thank you very much for watching, hopefully that was helpful and enjoyable.